This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off Track Betting. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. 18 races to bring you kicking it off at Monmouth Park. The traditional prep for the sapling stakes run on the turf for the first time this year. The five furlong Tyro stakes rip roaring Richie four to five. They're racing in the Tyro. Marston's Mills is going to the front. There goes Rip Roar and Ritchie rushing through now. Quickly to take over and open up three lengths right away. Kiwi Ruler is up and on the pace, and then comes I'm Bound to Score. All you see is my tail, followed by It's My Lucky Day. Keep the cannoli on the outside, and last of all is Gotta Get Going. And the field moves into the far turn. Rip Roar and Richie out there by two. Marston's Mills is running in second, and dropping back through the field there was Kiwi Ruler, and all you see is my tail had to steady as they come toward the top of the stretch. 22 flat the opening quarter. Rip Roar and Richie turning for home in front. To the outside, I'm Bound to Score. Moves up alongside. I'm bound to score outside of Rip Roar and Richie. These two to the final 16th together. It's my lucky day third. Far outside comes Marston's Mills. Rip Roar and Richie has the lead down to the wire. Rip Roar and Richie in the Tyro. Over I'm bound to score. It's my lucky day in Marston's Mills. And from the number one post position, Elvis Trio gets Rip Warren Ritchie on the front end and makes every step a winning one, returning $3.60 for Wesley Ward. Favorite in all three starts to date, shows terrific gate speed once again and scores in Sunday afternoon's Tyro. Up next, the big afternoon Saturday down at West Virginia. A couple stakes races to bring you up first. The West Virginia Governor's Cup and at 7 to 10, Tapazar. And they're off and racing. Tapisa from the inside was away nicely. Good go for the lead. Sarani Colisio just settling in behind them now. Parody followed by Popular Politics and dropping far back early is Headache. So they run into the first turn and the leader is Tapasar by a length. Colisio running second. A neck back to the outside is Sarani. A length and a half away to Popular Politics and then comes Parody. And about seven or eight lengths away last is the Grey Headache as they head towards the six furlong pole. And the leader is Tapasar, the three to five favorite by a length and a half. Sarani into second spot. Colisio down along the inside. Popular Politics moving up. One out, one back out. Three wide then is Parody, And still eight lengths away to Headache. They approach the four and a half furlong pole. And the leader is Tapisar by three quarters of a length. Sarani is running second. Back along the inside is Colisio. A length and a half away to Popular Politics followed by Parody, And now six lengths last is Headache as they hit the second turn. It's Tapisar the inside by a head over Saruni. They're two lengths in front of Colisio. Popular Politics, three wide is Parody, and five lengths away to Headache with five sixteenths to go. Race on in earnest now, and Saruni has gone to the lead. Saruni gets ahead in front of Tapasar, who's fighting back. They reach the quarter pole by four lengths. On the outside, Parody followed by Colisio, and then Popular Politics and Headache around the bend, and Tapasar, game on the inside, pinches about a half length in front of Saruni. They're four lengths clear of Colisio. Headache is coming up along the inside and then comes Parody, but it's Tapasar nicely clear down to the 16th pole moves three and a half lengths in front of Saruni and it's going to be Tapasar Tapasar comes on to score by about five lengths, Headache got up to run second a neck in front of Saruni, fourth in was Colisio and then came Parody and uh, just getting to the line now is Popular Politics and Corey Nakatani riding Tapazar for Steve Asmussen. We see Tapazar in the afternoon for the first time since early March when finishing runner-up in the Razorback. And as I was watching this race, you know, Tapazar silks, the Winchell uh, racing. We saw a Clarevich runner. What was up with the silks? They didn't look like the traditional silks being worn. But Tapazar, who has had its moments out in Southern California, did score so far this year in the San Fernando. But... 
a nice, comfortable four and a half length victory, returning three dollars and forty cents for their connection. Headache finished second under Mike Smith, and Saruni, who ran very, very well as the second choice in the wagering, checks in third. Up next, three-year-olds running for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the West Virginia Derby. Hanson, three to five. Is set to run in the West Virginia Derby. And they're off and racing, and it was a good, clean start for Hanson. One from the outside. Mike Smith is gunning Hanson up towards the leader, but Hero of Order is kicking up along the inside to make the favourite work a little bit with one lap to go. Settling down in third spot comes Macho Macho. About three lengths further back is Call to Serve, followed by Bourbon Courage. A couple of lengths away then to La Bernadan. Up on the outside next is Penn's Grant. Macho Buller's back along the inside as they run with uh, six and a half furlongs to travel now and it's Hanson up on the outside being made to work here by Hero of Order and they sprint clear. They've opened up a lead of about six lengths as they run to the back stretch. Racing in third, a clear third at the moment is called to serve. Back in behind them then comes Bourbon Courage. Racing down along the inside next is La Bernadan. Up on his outside is uh, Penn's Grant. A long way off then to Macho Bull and the trailer is Zeke Camelot. And they're covered by about 25 lengths as they run to the second turn. And on the inside it's Hero of Order with Hanson. Just stalking them is Macho Macho about to hook out three wide with three eights to go. Those three about four or five lengths in front. As they run now to the 5 sixteenths pole... Hanson now grabs a half length. Hero of Order back along the inside. Macho Macho is next. Penn's Grant and uh, making ground between runners next is uh, Bourbon Courage and as they run to the top of the stretch now, Hanson has a race on his hands. It's Hanson coming around the bend. He's out by about two and a half lengths. Bourbon Courage is getting up along the inside. Macho Macho is right there too as they run down to the 16th pole. Hanson is all out on the outside now. Macho Macho down along the inside is Bourbon Courage. It's Macho Macho winning by three quarters of a length over Bourbon Courage. Third home was called to serve and Hanson weakened to finish fourth. And has been the case a couple times in the recent past in the West Virginia Derby as they have burst, they have boosted the purse so high for three-year-olds. The name horse doesn't get it done, but Macho Macho for Steve Asmussen and Corey Nakatani, make it an extraordinarily successful Saturday afternoon down in West Virginia. They score the one-half length victory. Macho Macho sitting a perfect trip under Corey Nakatani returns $11.60 to win the 43rd running of the West Virginia Derby. Bourbon Courage finishes second and call to serve for Daniel Santino finishes third. Hanson coming off that powerful victory in the Iowa Derby finishes off the board and fourth at three to five. Going up to Toronto way, ladies and gentlemen, a couple stakes races to bring you from Woodbine Saturday afternoon. The Seagram's Cup at nine to five is pool play. They're at the post. They're off in the Seagram Cup and Incredicat broke on his toes. He's out there quick to take the early lead. Medi, Docky, Husky, Surge, and to the outside is a City Wolf. A stunning stag is between horses. Then James Street, Alpha, Better, and Pool Play is relaxed at the back of the pack. And it's Incredicat, as expected, to set the pace. Incredicat widens to two and a half lengths on Stunning Stag. City Wolf is third, 24 and 1 for that opening two furlongs. Incredicat into the back stretch. On the outside is City Wolf and Stunning Stag rides the rail along the back stretch. Alpha Better's fourth now and two and a half lengths off the lead. Then James Street, Pool Play, Medi, Docky, Hospi Surge. It's Incredit Cat and Alex Solis along the back stretch. They're reading through a come and get me opening half mile of 48 and three fifths. Incredit Cat toward the far turn. Watch closely by City Wolf, who's just a half a length in her rears. Then stunning stag, James Street's down toward the rail. Alpha Better's out there, three wide, pool play, six lengths off the lead. Then Medi, Docky, Hospi Surge. Incredicat, three quarters and 12 and three. And now City Wolf comes on on the outside and takes over. And it's City Wolf at the top of the stretch. Alpha Better's in there with a big shot at long odds. City Wolf. 
put the strong left-handed pressure on the outside. Alpha better trying to catch City Wolf as they come to the last 16th of a mile. City Wolf looking for the wire. Alpha better is surging late. Alpha better in a Seagram Cup shocker. City Wolf was second and James Street was third. But it is the second longest shot on the board. Alpha better, ladies and gentlemen. This runner was 8-1 to one on the morning line, but goes off at nearly three times those odds. Returns $48.90 for Daniel Velas. Scores the first stakes victory. Gets up in the last two jumps. Does Alpha better. Wow. City Wolf finishes second with James Street making the second start of the year, finishing third. And pool play. The 9 to 5 favorite finishes off the board and fourth. Up next, ladies and gen gentlemen, wrapping up the Triple Crown Canada style. They run on the poly track, they run on the dirt, and now it's time to go a mile and a half on the turf in the Breeders' Stakes. Dixie Strike, the recent winner of the Prince of Wales on dirt, is the 5 to 2 favorite. They're off in the Breeders' Stakes. Seen it all before. Street fight. Alternate destiny from the outside along with Colleen's uh, sailor as they head up to the back stretch. And it's ultimate destiny. Colleen sailor comes on on the outside and takes the lead. And it's Colleen sailor. La Tigra comes on on the outside to do battle with Colleen sailor as they head to the back stretch. Ultimate destiny is third. And Will Cox is close to the pace in fourth as is Sammy Modlin. And it's Colleen Sailor who leads it by a length and a quarter. Latigra second and ultimate destiny third. Wilcox between horses fourth. And Sammy Modlin is fifth. Seen it all before. Sixth and street fight is seventh. Big kick is an eighth and Quasator is ninth. Irish mission. The Phillies down to the inside in tenth. And Dixie strike gains ground from eleventh. Peyton is 12th. Aldous Snow is 13th. Has one horse beaten. That is Dragon Tail, who's 12 lengths off the lead. The opening half mile. 50 seconds a flat. And it's Colleen Sailor along the back stretch. And La Tigra continues to put the pressure on Colleen's a Sailor. Just in behind horses. Ultimate Destiny hugs the hedge. Wilcox is in amongst horses. Sammy Modlin just to the outside of Wilcox. Then Dixie Strike, who's three wide and three lengths off the lead. Quasitor, street fight. Seen it all before. The Oaks winner, Irish Mission, is back about five and a half lengths off the lead. Aldous Snow will have some traffic in front of him as they run into the turn. Then big kick. Dragon Tail is past one. Peyton trails. And they run to the three-eighths pull. La Tigra and Colleen Sailor stride for stride. Sammy Maudlin looms menacingly in third. And the Prince of Wales winner, Dixie Strike, is poised to pounce as they come over to the top of the stretch. And here comes Dixie Strike launching her bid as they straighten away. Dixie Strike. Irish Mission is coming on, and Aldous Snow has clear sailing on the far outside. Irish Mission, a narrow lead. Aldous Snow and Irish Mission in one of the great battles. Irish Mission on the inside and on the outside. Aldous Snow, what a fight here. Last 16th of a mile. Irish Mission with the upper hand. Irish Mission heroically held on to win the Breeder Stakes. Aldous Snow was second, Quasitor third, and seen it all before was fourth. But it is the Philly Irish mission in this field of 14 under Alex Solis, 12th early in the running, well back, scores the victory for Mark Frostad and the familiar silks of Robert Evans, returning $11.80. And the entire stretch, Irish mission just battling it out, scores the victory. Aldo Snow, Quaystar at 29 to 1 finishes third, and Dixie Strike can't win the final two legs of the Canadian Triple Crown, checks in sixth as the 5 to 2 favorite. Take a quick break. When we come back, racing from Del Mar. 
Some people take analyzing a horse race to a whole other level. Tune in every morning at 11 a.m. and get up-to-the-minute analysis of the day's biggest races, breaking news from the racing industry, and our daily best bets, only on OTB TV. What would another shop right mean for you? It means more chef-prepared meals to take home and call my own. Another place to get help with healthy eating. And another place to get fresh fish. Another shop right in the Capital District at 709 Central Avenue. Another shop right. That means more chef-prepared meals, another dietitian, and more fresh produce. Get more choices and even more savings with ShopRite's growing family. We're all about food. We're all about savings. We're all about you. With more than 70 convenient locations, internet wagering at CapitalOTV.com, and live operators ready to take your call, Capital OTV is the better choice for wagering on thoroughbred and harness racing. Stop by one of our locations to bet in person, or open a Capital Bets account and place your bets over the phone, or at CapitalOTV.com. Whether you're on the road or in the comfort of your own home, Capital OTV is the better choice. Save on Hyundais. Save at the pump during the Hyundai National Fuel Efficiency Drive Sales Event at Leah Hyundai in Albany. Hyundai has four models that deliver 40 MPG, and they're all on sale. New 2013 Sonatas, only $269 a month. $269 only, first payment down. Take $3,000 off new Santa Fe's and get 0% financing, plus America's best warranty with Hyundai Assurance. Save on Hyundais. Save at the pump at Leah Hyundai in Albany or LeahHyundaiofAlbany.com. Leah! Some people take analyzing a horse race to a whole other level. Tune in every morning at 11 a.m. and get up-to-the-minute analysis of the day's biggest races, breaking news from the racing industry, and our daily best bets, only on OTB TV. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Stakes action from Wednesday afternoon, Del Mar style. 61st running of the graduation stakes for two-year-old Calbreds at 3-2 Law Dog. And away they go. Lord Dog bobbled at the start. Lord Dog did break quickly. In fact, he's going to the front, but he did bobble at the start. So Lord Dog will take the early lead. Strong wind has come through along the inside to get second. Love Meister in the white cap right there. We winning is moving up on the far side. And last of all is Just Call Me Owl. A half mile left to go, and Strong Wind comes through on the inside of Law Dog. Just behind that, Love Meister. We winning is on the far side. Just Call Me Owl. Only four and a half covers the lot. They come to the 5 sixteenths, and Strong Wind along the inside is keen to go on. Law Dog right up alongside. We winning goes to take them on as well. Love Meister just waiting for somewhere to run in the white cap. Now sent along and just call me out. Any one of the five could win this. They come to the top of the lane now. Strong wind goes on. Law Dog is suddenly backed up. Suddenly something wrong with Law Dog today. Homeward bound and Strong Wind is firing home. Strong wind is out here moving like a winner. And Strong Wind and Kevin Krieger could not have been more impressive in the graduation. Strong wind in a rump. Close then for second. Just call me out. Love Meister and we winning was fourth but it is strong wind coming out of the Hollywood juvenile breaking from the rail gets to the front draws off to win by four plus lengths after bobbling at the start under Kevin Krieger returning eight dollars as the third choice in the wagering heck the fifth start for this two-year-old by August 1st a very easy victory just call me out finishes second as the second choice with Love Meister, longest shot in the board, finishing third. The favorite, Law Dog, finishes last at 3-2. to two. Friday afternoon, Calbreds once again going seven furlongs in the uh, real good deal stakes. Easy for me to say, Derby Gold, your favorite at 2-1. to one. And uh, away they go. Going for the early lead, we have Got Even along the inside. Rousing Sermon now comes through to take second. Up alongside Champions Gate going up to take that second spot now on the far side. Derby Gold is right there too. Then we come back to Stony Fleece. A toast to you along the inside. An unusual heat wave. Six lengths would cover the lot. They head to the half mile and Got Even has given his head now and allowed a stride away. Got Even couldn't be going any quicker for the distance. Got Even opens up three lengths on them. 
In second is Champions Gate. Rousing Sermon down at the rail. Derby Gold on the far side. Getting a little closer as unusual heat wave. Still six off those leaders though. And then we come back to Sony Fleece and a toast for you. They run past the three-eighths pole and got even the leader. Got even by two. Chased now by Champions Gate. Derby Gold on the far side. Rousing Sermon in with a good shot. Can Rousing Sermon, White Blink, is going to get a good run through as well. In behind that unusual heat wave. They're at the top of the lane and Rousing Sermon comes to take on. Got even behind that Champions Gate. Derby Gold not quite doing enough. Coming with a late run as unusual heat wave. Homeward bound and Rising Sermon strikes the front. Rising Sermon here's unusual heat wave flying. Unusual heat wave like a rocket. Unusual heat wave will get up. Unusual heat wave beautifully timed by Rafael Bejarano. Unusual heat wave. Rousing Sermon did everything but win it. Got even with third. But unusual heat wave ridden by Rafael Bejarano. One of those out, in, out. Once again, trips going seven eighths down at Del Mar. Finishes first as the third choice in the wagering, turning eight dollars and eighty cents. Rousing Sermon, exiting the swap stakes, finishes second under Mike Smith as the second choice. Got even out front early under Joe Talamo. Holds on to finish third. Derby Gold, the two to one favorite, finishes fifth in Friday's real d good deal stakes. Saturday afternoon, time for the prestigious. Clement Hirsch for older Fillier mares, eight to five, include me out. And away they go in the Clementel Hirsch, all seem to come out well. Great Hot wants the early lead, is sprinting up from the outside gate. Switch is showing early speed and Casey AC in the white between them. Include Me Out came out well and gets a good spot down at the rail. Up alongside of that comes the Fiends Pearl. Then we come back to Quaintly, who's taken back third last, back second last to Star Billing, and the trailer Amani, nine off the leaders. Past the three-quarter pole they go, and Great Hot wanted that lead, and now she has it. Great Hot a half a length. Switch those keen to go on down at the rail. Casey Ace is a close-up third. In behind that comes the Fiend's Pearl, and here's Include Me out. She's keen to go on now. Ryder just sizing up the field, took a good look back, and now Include Me out moves up to fourth. They are then being followed by Star Billing, third last and seven off the leaders, quaintly as second last, and Amani continues to trail ten off them. Less than a half mile to go in the Clement Hirsch, and Switch has set sail for home. Switch is kicking on now, leads by two to Casey AC, great heart to the rail. Zafine's Pearl, now Include Me Out, can she get out of there? She's in behind horses right now, but here she comes. Include Me Out is now on a roll, just got to find somewhere to come after Switch. In behind that, we have Star Billing, and then Amani. Top of the lane, Switch got first run, but Include Me Out has taken dead aim on her. And Include Me Out now strides up alongside a Switch. Running a big one as Star Billing chasing them. But it is Include Me Out in full flight for the wire. Chased home by Star Billing. Include Me Out, all hearts. Star Billing stretching her. They hit the wire. Include Me Out, hung on. Star Billing ran a huge one. Include Me Out, Star Billing. Amani came flying from last to get third and then switch. And Include Me Out coming out of a runner-up position in the finish in the Vanity Stakes most recently at Hollywood Park. Breaks from the inside under Joe Talamo, scores the neck victory as the 8-5 to five favor for Ron Ellis in the familiar fluorescent silks of JMS Stable. I thought Joe Talamo set a very patient, perfect ride on the favorite in Saturday's Clement Hirsch. Star Billing finishes second, and Amani, the second choice in the wagering, finishes third for Neil Drysdale. Sunday afternoon, two-year-olds prepping for the, well, perhaps the Del Mar debutante, and the Del Mar Futurity, the best pal stakes, even money, share our magic. And away they go. On the far side, Amarish broke very smartly in the white blinkers. No more extreme outside. K quarters right there, but they're all lining up. Here's Air of Storm from the inside gate. Shearer Magic has the white cap right alongside of that. Just in behind that, we have Air Kitty going up to join them. Marino's pulling hard and gaining ground in the gold cap and Miss Empire's last, but four lengths would cover the lot. Tightly bunched, a half mile to go, and Amarish the leader to K Court. 
Air Kitty is right there on the inside. No more is settled in fourth. Just behind that comes Air of Storm down at the rail. Alongside is Shearer, Magic, four lengths or Philidas. Marino has to go four wide. Last of all is Miss Empire. They come into the quarter pole and Amorish tries to break loose now. Amorish opens up by just about two. Air Kitty's running a big one from second. No more's on the outside. Behind that comes Air of Storm. Shearer Magic battling today. Shearer Magic, a good six off them. Along the inside, Miss Empire's running on. They come for home now, and here's Air Kitty. Air Kitty, no more on the grandstand side, these two. Air Kitty, no more running on late, Miss Empire. No more's going to get up to win it. No more to win the best, pal. No more. One and a half a length. Air Kitty was second. Miss Empire third. Philly second and third. Air of Storm finished fourth. And folks, you'll probably wait a very, very, very long time to see these type of results again. That is the first time starter, no more for Paul Redham, Doug O'Neill, and Garrick Gomez in the career debut is already a grade two winner. Scores the victory, the upset victory, returning $19.20. That's just part of the surprise in the, finale, in the results for the best pal. This is an open two-year-old stakes. First time starter wins, followed by Phillies. Phillies, don't know what that has to say about the two-year-old Colts in Southern California this year, but the Philly, Eric Kitty finishes second. And at 16 to one, the two-year-old Philly, Miss Empire finishes third. Sheer magic off the board at even money. These are the show prices, ladies and gentlemen, for Sunday's best pal. 980, 1060, 1340. Tough way to play the game, betting favorites to show. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, weekday action from the spa. Leah Auto Group, going miles above the rest. When your car needs service, Leah has you covered. We offer daily service specials, including our 1977 oil change. Book your next appointment online at leahcars.com or just stop by any Leah location at your convenience. No appointment necessary. Visit Leah Toyota, Nissan, Honda, and Hyundai on Central Avenue or Leah Infinity in Latham, open seven days a week and online all the time at leahcars.com. Leah! Listen to what people are saying about the Clubhouse Race Book. I've been coming here for um, well over 30 years to the OTB, and uh, I think this is an outstanding facility. Probably uh, comparable to something you'd see in Vegas. They have the big screens there, and then they have uh, the auxiliary screens for, you know, watching all the tracks. And the primary tracks of the day, they'll switch to the big screens, which is ideal for most of us race guys. We like to see the big races on the big screen. Well done with more than 70 convenient locations. Internet wagering at CapitalOTB.com and live operators ready to take your call. Capital OTB is the better choice for wagering on thoroughbred and harness racing. Stop by one of our locations to bet in person or open a Capital Bets account and place your bets over the phone or at CapitalOTB.com. Whether you're on the road or in the comfort of your own home, Capital OTB is the better choice. What would another shop right mean for you? It means more chef prepared meals to take home and call my own. Another place to get help with healthy eating. And another place to get fresh fish. Another shop right in the Capital District at 709 Central Avenue. Another shop right. That means more chef prepared meals, another dietitian, and more fresh produce. Get more choices and even more savings with ShopRite's growing family. We're all about food, we're all about savings, we're all about you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, going back a week ago, Monday, for the Shakespeare Caress Stakes, five and a half furlongs on the turf. Quick note in here, it's not that horrible looking, but uh, their Page Springs does pull up uh, on the backside. Eight to five in the Shakespeare Caress, well-deserved. And the rough. Rosa Salvaje breaking on top from the outside post. There goes Ballistic Sue now to grab the lead. Ballistic Sue is now in front. Well-deserved just her inside. Rosa Salvaje on the outside. And then Page Springs. Oh, Page Springs almost lost the rider. Oh, and, and did indeed as the saddle slipped far to the back and threw the uh, jockey. So Page Springs 
is uh, out of it at this point as they round the far turn. Ballistic Sioux has opened up a two and a half length lead. Rosa Savahi on the march, second on the outside, well deserved, is third. And then it's a break of uh, five lengths back to a fleet lasses on the outside of Holiday for Kitten. And then Sunlight Sonata and Zermatt's the trailer coming to the top of the stretch. Ballistic Sioux, Ballistic Sioux on top by two and a half lengths now. On the outside, Rosa Salvaje on the hard chase coming down to the final for and Ballistics Lou starting to wilt. Here's Rosa Salvaje with the lead and here's Holiday for Kitten. Rosa Salvaje and Holiday for Kitten. It's those two down to the wire. Rosa Salvaje full out. Holiday for Kitten keeps on coming. Here comes the wire. And it is Rosa Salvaje narrowly. Holiday for Kitten was second. Zermatt closed to be third. Ballistics Lou was fourth. But it is Rosa Savahi scoring the victory under Alex Solis, winning north of the border and north of the Capital District. At $19.70, the longest shot on the board, longest shot to finish the race, returning $41.40 for Lisa Lewis, Holiday Kitten. First start of the year, finishes second as the third choice in the wagering. Zermatt finishes third, well-deserved. Eight to five, finishes sixth. Perhaps not as well-deserved as we thought. After the dark day, Wednesday afternoon, New York Reds going six and a half furlongs in the John Morrissey band box, two to one. And they're off. From the inside, Dr. Disco racing up after that lead. Uncle T7 has early speed, so to be bullish. And Fiddler's Lafitte has come out running in fourth. Saginaw had a little stumble coming out of there, but he gets that foothold at the rail and comes on through. In behind that group is Bandbox, and four lengths back to Mine Over Manor. So the field moves off the backstretch run. Dr. Disco is the leader. In between us is Saginaw on the outside, Fiddler's Lafitte. The field moving for the far turn after a 22 and 1 opening quarter mile. Chasing Dr. Disco. Saginaw still pressing hard for that lead. Fiddler's Lafitte on the outside runs in third. Now toward the inside. Band boxes fourth. He's just two and a half lengths from the lead moving toward the top of the stretch. B bullish Uncle T7. Mine over matter just starting to get it away as the field turns for home. It's Saginaw. Saginaw heads for home with the lead. Dr. Disco starting to wilt down toward the rail. Uncle T7, B bullish. Band boxes in between horses. Into the final furlong. Saginaw spurred on by David Cohen to a three length lead. Uncle T7 runs second, B bullish. Far outside, mine over matter. Band box toiling at the rail. Saginaw cruising to the wire. Saginaw won it by five emphatic lengths. It wound up being very close for second between B Bullish and Mine Over Matter. But it is Saginaw breaking from the rail for David Jacobson and David Cohen coming out of the Metropolitan Mile. Now, Saginaw was the eight to five favorite, but wins by a handful as the second choice in the wagering, returning $7.30. B Bullish, who had a brutal trip last year in the John Morrissey at seven years of age finishes second at by far the longest price on the board at nearly 28 to one mind over matter finishes behind B bullish once again they exit third and fourth place finishes in the recent chasing women but Saginaw scores the nice victory on Wednesday afternoon Thursday afternoon time for the jumpers to get underway the AP Smithwick Memorial. We join it in progress. Four horse entry, nine to five. Up and over is tax ruling. All together right there with him and via Galilei up close. Donisky now beginning to advance. He moved up a couple spots as they move for this clubhouse uh, turn and the clubhouse fence with tax ruling leading them all. Tax ruling has led through the first circuit. Soars over that fence, did it quite well. All together, down inside, and in between horses via Galilee. Exposed on the outside is Dynasty, and then Decoy Daddy is in behind horses, followed closely by Spy in the Sky. Divine Fortune trying to make it three here in the Smithwick. He's about six lengths from the lead as they enter the backstretch run. Right alongside Divine Fortune is left unsaid, and it's two lengths back to Country Cousin and the last of all, the Jigsaw Man. Tax ruling continues to take them along here. Tax ruling up and over. Stable May moves up a spot now. Via Galilei is second at one two. Heading for the far turn. Dynasty out to pick it up. And he's moving very aggressively now in the clear on the outside. Then all together. And they're up 
Andover as they move for the far turn. Divine Fortune still about five from the lead now. Divine Fortune being asked to pick it up. Left to pick his way through in between horses as they round the far turn. Spy in the Sky is revving up now with a three wide mid. Dynasty is there on the far outside. Down toward the inside is Via Galilee. And it is Spy in the Sky who's coming away with the lead as the field turns for home. He's spun very wide, though, off the turn into the stretch the final time. Spy in the Sky. And all together, heading for that final fence, Divine Fortune's in a little traffic there. On the outside, left unsaid on the scene late. Here he comes on the outside. The one to grab is Spy in the Sky. Left unsaid, charging at him. Time running out all together, third toward the rail. Can Spy in the Sky hold on? Left unsaid, spy in the sky. After two miles and a sixteenth, he might have won it by a sixteenth of an inch. Very close, spy in the sky, and left unsaid. But no, it is the longest price on the board. $52 for Light It Up, spy in the sky, ladies and gentlemen, from the outside post position. And if you were watching the race closely, didn't appear with the pan shot as they were turning for home that there was no room on the turf course. So many runners, so bunched up, so wide with the pylons, but Spy in the Sky gets the upset victory for Jim Day. Left on set finishes second, all together finishing third. The four prong entry finishes fourth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And how about the show prices in steeplechasing? $13.40, dollars $10.60. $10 Spy in the Sky last year left the course in the A.P. Smith Wick. In 2012, receives the laurels. Friday afternoon, 13 furlongs on the turf, three turns, the Johns call 6-5 Tahoe Lake. They're in the gate. And they're off. Raji Barrage sends Ballet Boy to immediately establish the lead. Ballet Boy given his cue right from the gate and leads already by two and a half lengths. Hailstone is second on the outside. Taco Lake is now third, followed by Herod's Creek fourth. Inscrutable at the back of the Packer Leon. Game ball is the last of all. So Ballet Boy opens up a four and a half length lead in the early stages here. Now make that five lengths as Taco Lake edges through on the inside of Hailstone. Now they're gaining quickly, and uh, Tahoe Lake, Eddie Castro had to slam on the brakes there as Ballet Boy was throttled down. The opening quarter mile in 23 and 3 fifths seconds. Ballet Boy, the leader, as they move by us now for the first time. Hailstone defers and sits back second through the half mile, 47 and 2 fifths seconds. That is a very legitimate opening half mile here. One lap to go. Ballet Boy still in control and has been moving at a pretty solid clip here. Leads by three and a half lengths. Hailstone is second. Tahoe Lake is third. Followed on the inside by Game Ball, now fourth. And then executable as they move around the turn. Up top, Ballet Boy still in control here. Ballet Boy, the lead's now two lengths. Hailstone races second. Followed by Tahoe Lake third. Herod's Creek, inscrutable, and Game Ball. Into the backstretch run after three quarters and one twelve. And three, six furlongs remaining here. Ballet Boy continues to grind it out while in front. Hard on his heels is Hailstone. And loping long easily, Tahoe Lake, he's very comfortable. Midway down the backstretch run, Harrods Creek and Scootable moves up willingly on the inside. He's only four and a half lengths from the lead. And Game Ball is the trailer, but he's still within striking range as the field moves into the far turn. A mile up and 137 and four fifth seconds into the far turn. And there goes Hailstone. Hailstone now. Powers up on the outside. And here comes Tahoe Lake, and he's making his move. Nothing left for Ballet Boys dropping out of it. And then moving through down toward the inside is Harrods Creek and Game Ball. Inscrutable now, second to last as they make the turn to the top of the stretch. Tahoe Lake and Hailstone going at each other. Harrods Creek swings into action on the outside. Game Ball laboring back and forth. One furlong to go. And it is Harrods Creek who takes the lead. Harrods Creek now in front and beginning to pull away as they come down to the final 16th of a mile. Tahoe Lake and Hailstone followed by Game Ball. And they're coming down to the finish. And Harrods Creek scores here to win by four. 
Tahoe Lake held on for second, followed by Hailstone and Game Ball. And after an opening 23 and 3, heck, you don't see that often going 9 furlongs on the turf, let alone 13. Uh, very racehorse, strong early fractions. But Herod's Creek <laughs> off of that uh, early action under Junior Alvarado as the second choice in the wagering is able to pick up the pieces and score a convincing $6 Victory for Bill Mott. Tahoe Lake finishes second. Hailstone finished third in the early pace sitter. No surprise that Ballet Boy doesn't beat a horse after those early fractions. And I will say this about a six-horse field going 13 furlongs at Saratoga. I found Friday's stakes race to be a very, very exciting race, which I find to be atypical. Often you can get just a merry-go-round in these long turf races, but not the case Friday in the John's Call. Also Friday afternoon time for Phillies and Maris, some prepping for the ballerina, going six furlongs in the Honorable Miss. It's me, Mom, is the 9-to-5 favorite. And they're off. Winning image right out of there. And so too Roman Treasure. And it's me, Mom, on the far outside. Up the backstretch. Winning image, the leader. It's me, Mom, coming up on the outside. And it's me, Mom, now grabs a short lead. Winning image second. And Roman Treasure is third. Then a break of five. Back to CeCe's pal, who's racing fourth early on here. It's me, Mom. The opening quarter, 21 seconds flat. A spectacular opening quarter mile here. It's me, Mom, the leader. Winning images racing second. Roaming Treasure is third. Six lengths back. CeCe's pal fourth on the inside. Maple Force is fifth. Five lengths back to beat the Blues. And at the back of the pack here, Island, Bell and, or Island Bound and Bell of the Hall. The field turning for home. Here's that half mile. 43 and 3 fifth seconds. Taking its toll on It's Me, Mom. On the outside, Roman Treasure. And here they come into the final furlong with Maple Forest coming through. It's me, Mom, is spent. It's Maple Forest, the leader. Roman Treasury, CeCe's pal. Island bound on the far outside, Bell of the Hall. Coming down to the line, CeCe's pal, Island bound. And CeCe's pal holds on. Island bound right there in a the photo was close for third as well between Bell of the Hall and Beat the Blues. The time here was 109 and 4. But CeCe's pal sitting off the pace for Junior Alvarado, who just won a 13 furlong turf race, now comes back to win a six furlong dirt race. It's me, Mom, who had had a scintillating workout at Suffolk Downs. Pops out of the gate, goes 21.14, and then rarefied air at the spa, breaks 44 seconds for the half, goes 43.78. Well, that was about all we were going to see for Willie Martinez, 72 morning line price horse. CeCe's pal scores the $8.50 victory for Richard Dutrow. Island Bound finishes second with Beat the Blues, checking in third in Friday's Honorable Miss. We'll take our final break when we return weekend action from Saratoga. What would another ShopRite mean for you? It means more chef-prepared meals to take home and call my own. Another place to get help with healthy eating. And another place to get fresh fish. Another ShopRite in the Capital District, 709 Central Avenue. Another ShopRite. That means more chef-prepared meals, another dietitian, and more fresh produce. Get more choices and even more savings with ShopRite's growing family. We're all about food. We're all about savings. We're all about you. Hello, racing fans. I'm Robert Lee, the newest member of the Capital OTB team. Follow me throughout the Saratoga racing season for all the late-breaking updates and racing information from right here in the paddock on Twitter, at Capital OTB. There you'll find our handicappers' picks, updated and instant analysis, and so much more. So don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at Capital OTB. We'll see you there. You could wait for money to start falling from the sky, or you could head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat-screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, and amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. Conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook is the better choice. 
Leah Collision does it all. Tow it in or drive right up to Leah Collision, the area's largest certified collision center. Make Leah Collision your first call after an accident and let their certified staff guide you through the process. Our experts repair your vehicle quickly and affordably. We accept all makes, models, and insurance companies, and there's never an appointment needed for an estimate. Leah does it all. It's so big here, we even have a car rental center. Make your collision decision an easy one. The Leah Collision Center. Because we do it all. Leah! Saturday Stakes action from Saratoga kicks off with a mile on the turf. Phillies and Maras in the Della Rose Stakes. Del Bata, 2-1. And they're off. It's dancing in town. Julie's love. And there goes Tricks in the City. Heading for the first turn. Dancing to town. And Tricks in the City. Just in behind him, Julie's love. Race is third. Dancing in her dreams is fourth on the outside. And La Cloche has come out fifth. And then as Wallace followed by Fontley. And at the back of the pack are Deal Bada. Deal Bada's about 10 or 11 from the front now. And the trailer is apparition. So the field moves up the back stretch run. And it's dancing, dancing to town to lead the field here. Dancing to town, being prompted by Tricks in the City. They separate themselves by six lengths from the rest of the field. Julie's Love third, Dancing in Her Dreams fourth, La Cloche's fifth on the inside. Break of another three back to Wallace behind a lively pace that's established up front. And then it's Dale Bottas. She's got a lot to do and a half mile to do it here. Twelve lengths from the lead. And then down inside it's Fontley and well behind the rest now is Zapparition. Dancing to town got a half in a tough 47 and two fifth seconds. Tricks in the city is all out second. The others starting to close in now. Here's Julie's Love running in third. And La Cloche and Dilbata down inside. But it's dancing to town still there for the final furlong. Here comes Julie's Love running at her at the 16th pole. Dancing to town and Julie's Love keeps on plugging away. Dilbata coming fast on the rail. Here's the wire. Julie's Love the winner. Dilbata and dancing to town. Close for it there. But it is Julie's love, ladies and gentlemen, under Julian Leperu going out for a grand motion. Now three for four in the United States coming off of the stakes action down at Parks Racing on July 3rd. Scores the one half length victory, turning $10.20. Deal Bada, favorite in the wagering, I think was truly up against it back early off a very moderate pace in the one mile Della Rose. Dancing to town at 10 to 1, finishes third after setting that pace in Saturday afternoon's Della Rose. Time for grade one action Saturday afternoon. Up first, six furlongs, three year old Phillies being run at the spa for the first time. The prior mistakes, Agave Kiss, 9 to 10. And they're off Agave Kiss right out of there. Agave Kiss and Libby McKenzie just to her inside. To NDWE out there third, and Jazzy Ideas come out running in fourth. Judy the Beauty's fifth in between horses and Emma's Encore as the field races up the back stretch. And Agave Kiss is doing her thing. And that thing is speed, speed, speed. It's Agave Kiss, the leader. 22 flat opening quarter mile. Agave Kiss with her usual tack out there. Two lengths. Two Wendy Wee runs along in second. On the outside, Judy the Beauty is third. Farthest out, Jazzy Ideas fourth. And then farther back, Living McKenzie has tailed off. And Emma's Encore, eight lengths from Agave Kiss. Here's Agave Kiss turning for home. 44 and three half mile. Top of the stretch, Agave Kiss, three length lead. Judy the Beauty is second. On the far outside, it's Jazzy Idea. Emma's Encore, kicking in late. Agave Kiss starting to wilt. Judy the Beauty is coming, and so too is Emma's Encore. It's Judy the Beauty and Emma's Encore on the wire. Too close to call. Emma's Encore surging at the end with a flying finish to photo with Judy the Beauty. Agave Kiss failed late in the stretch to be third. And Jazzy Idea. And Emma's Encore, not quite the price she was in the victory ride, but oh my, what an off-the-pace nose victory, returning $12.40 
for Mr. Alan Jerkins, just beating on the line, Judy the Beauty for Wesley Ward and yours truly, Joel Rosario Board and Agave Kiss, who, you know, in the victory ride was just press paced early and collapsed. Here, I thought Agave Kiss going in had the best chance to win a grade one race in her career, and I thought she had it rather comfortably as the odds on choice under Ramon Dominguez, but she fails in her quest to win the grade one priors, finishing third at odds on. Grade one action continuing Saturday afternoon, the prestigious nine furlong Whitney stakes at five to two, Ron the Greek. And they're off. An endorsement is hustled out of there after that early lead, but Trickmeister is going to run with them as they hit the first turn in Fort Larned. Just outside the lead, he's third into the turn. Rule is fourth, Keish Electronica fifth. Him book not too far from the pace today. Fifth and on the far outside, flat outs between those two. And they are now followed by Hunter's Bay and six lengths back to Ron the Greek. Ron the Greek is allowed to drop a dozen lengths from the lead as they make their way to the back stretch after a 23 and two opening quarter mile. So it's endorsement the leader. Right there in his hip pocket is Trickmeister. Fort Larned cruising not far beyond them on the outside third. Himbook just four links from the lead down the backstretch run to his inside now is Rule then Caixa Electronica who's under a good hold there by Javier Castellano. And then Hunter's Bay has room down toward the inside. Flat out is allowed to relax beneath the Rosie Napropnik there and still trailing the field is Ron the Greek. He's about 11 lengths from the lead. Half up in 46 and 4 fifths seconds. Strong pace here as the field rounds the far turn. Up top, endorsement, Trickmeister and Fort Larned. They've been one, two, three, all the way around the track. A testing three-quarter mark in one, ten, and four. Himbook's in an all-out drive. And from the back of the pack, from the back of the pack, Ron the Greek is picking off horses one by one. He's spun very wide, though, by flat out. Then Kaish Electronica down toward the rail. Fort Larned comes away with the lead with a bold run at the 3 sixteenths. It's Fort Larned in front by five. Ron the Greek way out in the middle of the track. Hembook and flat out coming down to the finish with Fort Larned to catch. Fort Larned to catch and they're not going to catch him. Fort Larned the winner by a diminishing length and a half. Ron the Greek photos for the runner up spot with flat out. Hembook was fourth in the Whitney with a time of 147 and three. But it is Fort Larned, ladies and gentlemen, scoring another victory coming out of the Cornhuskers, scores the impressive, impressive victory from Brian Hernandez. Had an outside post, ladies and gentlemen, starting nearly on the turn in the Whitney Stakes. Brian Hernandez did a terrific job, as did Ian Wilkes getting the Hall of Fame silks of Bayakoa to the spa and to the winner's circle. Kudos to them. Ron the Greek unable to add the Whitney Stakes to his Santa Anita handicap and Stephen Foster resume for this year. And flat out, runs pretty ordinary to finish third after running second in last year's Whitney. But Fort Larned, a very, very nice score, returning $16.40. And wrapping up the grade one action from Saratoga, Sunday afternoon, six furlongs, the Vanderbilt at six to five, Shackelford. And they're off. Shackelford was not out particularly well. It's Poseidon's Warrior who races to the lead. MC comes up on the inside. He grabs the lead now. And then Rothko Shackelford is fourth and on the rail. And then it's Justin Phillip who moves alongside Shackleford. He's fifth. Then Sloan Ranger, Amazing Destiny. And Jersey Town trails the field. MC takes the field through the opening quarter mile here in 21 and 4 in the mud. So it's MC the leader. Rothko pressing. Poseidon's Warrior on the outside. Shackleford, the Preakness winner, is now fourth and in behind the leaders. On the outside, Justin Phillip moves to fourth. And Shackleford is faded back to fifth. And now the field coming to the top of the stretch. MC and Rothko head to head for the lead. Just to their outside, long shot Poseidon's Warrior. Three sixteenths to go and Shackelford has faded to last. Down to the final furlong. 
MC fighting hard down toward the rail. On the outside, Poseidon's Warrior. In between those two, Rothko. Justin Phillip is coming on fast. Amazing destiny. They're coming down to the line. Could it be Poseidon's Warrior? Yes! Yes, he did! At 36 to 1, he was in a photo with MC as well, as well on the outside as Justin Phillip. And Poseidon's Warrior, ladies and gentlemen, the second longest shot on the board for Irad Ortiz, adding the grade one victories at Saratoga to his resume, scores the $74.50 neck upset victory over Justin Phillip. MC, who was tremendous in defeat as the second choice at two to one down inside, setting the pace, just couldn't hold off the exact up. Shackelford, ladies and gentlemen, who, in my opinion, on multiple fronts, was up against it. The weight of six to five, the weight from the, the rail position sprinting, and as I saw the track on Sunday afternoon, boy, the going certainly was deep down inside. Shackelford doesn't beat a horse coming out of his exciting victory in the Metropolitan. That wraps up this week's edition of Horses and Courses, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your stakes action from around the country. We'll see you next time.